We're looking at the site for Cowboy. Uh, they make electric bikes, and I think this section is devoted to information about their companion app. Uh, but one of the things that you might have noticed about it, if you're like me, is that even though there's lots of different types of content here, like uh, here we've got maybe like a leaderboard, we've got a map over here, maybe like a heat map or something. And this is a weather forecast type of card. Even though it's all really different types of content, it feels like it's all part of the same system because all these components are nested inside of the same uh, aspect ratio cards. Aspect ratio is the relationship between the width and the height, right? So since they all have that same ratio, it kind of feels like they're part of the same system. So really masterful use of um, the aspect ratio here. In general, uh, whenever you're doing web development, aspect ratio tends to come up quite a bit because let's say that you're doing um, like a, a video light box and you want the screenshot that's showing off the video to be the same aspect ratio as the video itself, which is that 16 by nine aspect ratio we typically see videos in. Um, how do you do that? Or how do you do like if you want to have cards that feel like Instagram stories, which are a 1.9 by one aspect ratio, like how do you do that and make sure that the image is always filling that card and it's always filling it proportionally? Well, that's a great question. And that is the question that we're going to answer in today's tutorial. We're actually going to cover two ways to do this. And I've covered the first way in a few other um, tutorials, but I wanted to make sure I covered it in this one because I'm also going to cover a second way. And I just wanted to give you both. So you can kind of compare and contrast the two ways to do this. The first one, we're going to use all native Webflow styling using the style uh, panel over here on the right hand side. And the second way, we're going to bring in a little bit of custom CSS, um, some uh, CSS attributes that aren't a part of the Webflow uh, style panel just yet. Um, so again, they both have their pros and cons and going to let you decide which one you think might be the best to use. All right, so let's go ahead and build the first of our aspect ratio cards. Uh, so I'm actually going to build a really quick grid. And so let's call this aspect grid, just something to nest our cards inside of. And I'm going to add four columns and you can actually delete the second row because um, as this one here suggests, rows will be automatically generated um, if you add more than four items. All right, and then I'm going to increase the spacing just a touch <laughs> and then add a little bit of margin top to push it away from our headline here. Inside of our aspect grid, let's add a div block. And this div block is going to be the card. It's going to be the thing that has the aspect ratio style applied to it. And it's going to hold all of our content. Um, for this first strategy, we're going to use what's commonly referred to as the padding hack. And the important thing to know about why this works or like what is going on um, behind the scenes is that uh, whenever you use a percentage of padding, uh, top or bottom, it's always relative to the width of the element. Um, so I'm going to call this um, padding uh, ratio. And let's do like um, most videos are in that 16 by 9 ratio, kind of like a very wide um, landscape kind of ratio. And 16 by 9 is a 56.25% ratio. So let's do P ratio 56. All right, and if you wanted to do that math <laughs> in Webflow, if you're really bad at math like I am, you can. Uh, so we'll click padding top and we'll do um, nine divided by 16. And you can see that it's 0 0.5625 per, um, or a decimal. And really we want a whole percentage. So we're gonna do 56.25%. All right, so you could do the same thing. Let's say you wanted a, a four by three ratio. You could do three over four. You can see that that's 0.75 and really we want 75%. Okay, so what's happening is, again, the since we're using a relative unit, the percentage, it's relative to the width of the element. So let's say that we wanted this to be perfectly square. Well, all we had to do is make this 100%. And now the padding is equal to 100% of the width. So that, that's how we're creating this aspect ratio because the padding top is in relationship to the width. Let's set this back to 56.25%. Okay, we're gonna have some issues though if we think we're done. <laughs> because if I go ahead and add an image in here, you'll notice that it's getting pushed down below our padding and that's how uh, padding is supposed to work, right? 
Um, so you can see that uh, if I kind of move this up a little bit, you can see for those hashed lines that that's pushing our image down. So the way that we need to get this to work is we need to position this image absolutely inside of our card. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and set the position of my aspect ratio card to relative. Otherwise, I can't position this image absolutely inside of it. Uh, and then let's do like, um, we'll call this ratio image. And we're gonna position this again, absolutely. We're gonna pin it to the top left corner and set the width and the height to 100%. So now it's kind of nested inside of here. It looks a little bit weird because uh, the placeholder image is there. Let's go ahead and select a new image. All right, and we've run into another problem and that is that since we've positioned this absolutely inside of our ratio card, the image is getting really squashed. Uh, you can tell that um, what it's doing is it's just um, like squishing it, crushing it so that it fits inside of our card. But we don't want that. We want the image to always show up um, in the original proportions uh, the, of where we uploaded it. So it's a way to fix that is using the object fit property, which is right here below the overflow properties. And instead of fill, we wanna set it to cover. Uh, so you can tell right away that that fixed the issue for us. If I take that off, we've got squashed, uh, object fit cover, that is now showing it um, perfectly in the original aspect ratio that we uploaded the card in. Another cool thing that we can do with this, um, just kind of showing you this so you know for future, is you can set the origin for where you want this card to originate from. So we can set the top, middle, bottom, and then obviously all the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in the middle there. Um, and now we have an image that is nested inside of our aspect ratio. All right, let's pretend that uh, we want to do something like an Instagram story. Um, then what we could do there is, um, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'll just call this a P ratio story. Um, and Let's see, um, I think we need something that is 191% of the width of the element. Again, I, th I think Instagram stories are 1.9 to one. So I guess this really should be 190. Okay, so now we've got that Instagram size and let me copy and duplicate this. Let's say that we wanted to fit some things inside of here, like maybe like a heading or um, a little blurb or something like that, then what we have to do is position something inside of here absolutely and then add some stuff to it. So I'm gonna add a div block and we'll call this um, ratio caption. We're gonna position it uh, absolute. Go ahead and set it to full. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a, um, maybe 50 is too much, uh, 30. A little bit of a um, overlay so that we can see white text. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and set our color to white. Um, we can give it a little bit of padding here so that the text is not showing up um, scrunched to the side of the card. Let's use Flexbox in here um, to position it on the bottom of the card. And then if I add a heading and we'll say something like an H4 maybe or maybe an H3. Um, Instagram card and then maybe we'll add a text block and this can be something like uh, what is today day's date like November something uh, November uh, I don't know what it is <laughs> okay there you go all right so now we've got like a caption in here that's sitting on top of our image and that's how we can kind of nest things inside of there. So the wonderful thing about this is, let me actually go ahead and delete this one. If I copy and paste this, uh, I can go into the image and just go ahead and add all different kinds of images. And it doesn't matter what the original aspect ratio of the image is when we uploaded it, it's gonna show up constrained inside of our card, but the image is gonna show up proportional to its original proportions. Um, so other thing maybe we can do is, uh, if we want to, we can go ahead and add a little bit of corner radius, like 24 pixels. 
And that's actually not going to work because we need to set overflow to hidden. All right, now we've got some nice kind of rounding off of our images. All right, the other thing that I wanna mention that you can do uh, just so that you're aware of this is responsively, uh, we can change this on like tablet, uh, mobile, and you know, landscape, all that stuff. Um, so let's say that when we got to mobile, uh, maybe let me go ahead and delete all of them but one. Maybe this felt like it was just too tall. Um, whenever you scroll through, it just never seems like you can actually see all of the story. Well, what's nice is that we can come into our padding and we can just decrease this and maybe we want it to be 100% on mobile for whatever reason. Um, the awesome thing is that our image is still nested inside of there. Um, it's still filling the card out. It's showing up proportional. It's not getting squished. Um, all we had to do was change this one style. Our caption is still nested inside of here. Uh, maybe we just want to tweak a little bit of the padding uh, so that on mobile it's not um, too crunched in, but very easy to get this kind of be responsive, which is nice. Okay, so before we move on to the next style or the next way to do these image ratios, I want to point out the pros and the cons. So the pros of this specific um, strategy is that it's all native to Webflow. We've done it all using our style panel. We haven't had to use any custom code, which is awesome. It's always much preferable to do that than having to use custom code. Um, now, the issue, though, is that um, we're using absolute positioning. And whenever you use absolute positioning, you always have to be very careful that you're not going to get yourself into trouble. OK, so let me uh, add another div block in here. and. Let's use the 56 ratio that we used earlier. And then let's add the same image. And let's add the same caption as well. All right, so um, here on a desktop, we're kind of getting away with um, how small this is. But it might be that when I get into here, we might have some issues. Or maybe if this content was a little bit more, it's a cram card with a much longer title that takes up four lines. <laughs> okay, so you can see what I'm driving at here is that um, this is not a responsive proof way to do this because since we're using absolute positioning, we're getting all of this overflow when the size of our card is not enough to fit the content inside of it. Okay, we're actually seeing that same thing happen here on desktop. The next way to use um, aspect ratios um, actually solves this issue. So the, the pro of it is that um, the card will increase in size and allow for the content inside of it if it exceeds the aspect ratio, which is really nice. It's much more responsive foolproof. But the con is that it uses a custom code. And it's something that we have to manage inside of an embed or in the project settings instead of all through the Webflow style panel, which is definitely preferable. Let's go ahead and build another aspect ratio card. But this time, let's go ahead and use the second method for creating aspect ratios. And to do that, we're actually going to use the relatively new CSS property called aspect ratio. <laughs> uh, again, this is not in the current Webflow CSS style panel as of November of 2021. Um, but what it's looking for is this CSS property aspect hyphen ratio. And then it's looking for these values. And the first one is width, and the second one is height. Um, so you can read more about it here. I'll mention that this article is linked in the description box below. And by the way, um, I looked it up on Can I Use in terms of how much browser support does this have? And you can see that it has really, really generous wide support across a bunch of different browsers with the exception, of course, of Internet Explorer and a few other ones. But in terms of Edge, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari, the main ones, those are all covered. Okay, so let's go ahead and add another grid, just like the one that we used previously. And then we're going to add a div block. And this is going to hold our new aspect ratio card. And so we'll just call it aspect ratio. And let's do the same one. Let's do Instagram size. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. And then I have an embed up here. The first thing we need to do is add our style tags. And that indicates to the browser that this is CSS that we're about to add. 
Um, and then inside of here, let's add our aspect ratio underscore Instagram class. And we need to add a period in front of it to indicate that this is referencing a class. And then if I come into my article, I can just go ahead and copy and paste this. And there we are. Now to make this the Instagram size, we want that 1.9 to one ratio, right? Well, the first one is the width so that one can stay there. And the second one is 1.9. So I just go ahead and save that. You can see that we now have that same kind of size that's created, which is awesome. The other cool thing is I can add my content right in front of, uh, right in here. So remember when I added the uh, image earlier um, with the padding hack? Well, with this one, we're not using the padding hack, so it's actually fitting inside of our card. I think we used three, just like it would in a regular box. And let me go ahead and copy uh, this date over here and paste that in. Okay, so we can also use Flexbox on this to get it to the bottom, just like we did with uh, the other card. And this is all inside of the same aspect ratio. So what's really nice about this is we're condensing this and merging classes into one awesome reusable class. Uh, and we can even add our padding inside of here. Uh, so I think it was 32 pixels or so. And to get our image in here, we would just kind of follow the same strategy that we did earlier, which is set this to position relative and then grab one of our ratio image classes and bring that in. Now we are going to run into a problem here in that uh, since the image is positioned absolutely, it's going to show up on top of our text. A super easy fix for that. We can add a div block. We can nest our um, heading and our date inside of here. And then we want to make sure that the image is on top of here and then add a class of position relative. And that immediately positioned the text on top of the card. If I go into my aspect ratio, I can go ahead and make the font color white. Um, and again, because the image was positioned absolutely, it's a positioned element. These elements previously were non-position, they were just static. So position static, that means that no matter what, the image is going to show up on top of the text. But now that they're inside of this position relative element, um, they're going to be, uh, they're going to respect the order here in the navigator or the DOM. So if I move this position relative element on top of the image, the image is going to show up on top of the text. All right. So that was the easy fix. And then we can also just go ahead and steal our uh, caption. So we can paste that in there and we can get rid of the duplicate content and our ratio caption is now just functioning like a little overlay. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy and paste this just to show you that no matter what image we add in here, um, it's going to uh, display the images in the correct aspect ratio. Uh, how about that one? Okay. So really awesome that with this one class, we can do so much just by applying that aspect hyphen ratio property to it. All right, what about the video? And what about, we've talked about the overflow issues. Uh, whoops. <laughs> uh, we've talked about the overflow issues with this strategy. So let's test making sure that um, we can create a, a card this small and it's gonna increase in size to allow for uh, content to display there. Okay, so let's add a div block and we're going to call this video ratio. And oh, I've already got one in here. Uh, so we'll do aspect ratio um, video. <laughs> okay. Um, inside of our embed, let's go ahead and add this here. And we can just copy this style. And we want that to be that 16 by nine aspect ratio. So we just need to make the width 16 and the height nine. All right, so you can see here that we're getting that same aspect ratio that we did up here. And then if I grab a image, add it in there, and then make sure that this is set to position relative, our image is gonna show up. And then we can go ahead and copy this position relative thing and add it in there. Um, okay, now we need to do the same thing in terms of adding our um, 
padding and using Flexbox and all that uh, to get this to position in the bottom. And maybe let's use 20, let's do 32 just to match. Okay. Um, it has to be 32. <laughs> okay, perfect. So here the card is working appropriately. Maybe we can just add that overlay. Um, but what if the content is way too big? Um, so we can actually just copy this and paste it in there. So you can see that even though we had the aspect ratio attached to this, and it was creating that perfect ratio, when the content was larger than uh, the aspect ratio, the car grew in size to allow for that room. So what's beautiful about this particular CSS property is that it's way more responsive and is gonna ensure that um, you don't have those overflow issues that we were experiencing here. A cup, one thing you do wanna watch out for is uh, we added some corner radius uh, on this card. And if you do add corner radius and you have to hit um, overflow hidden, um, it, the um, increasing in size is not gonna work. Uh, so I think what you could do is add a div block, um, bring it out here. And then let's say this is corner radius uh, 24. Um, then we would need to set this to overflow hidden and then we would do the corner radius of 24. So it's a little bit of a bummer and that we're having to use another element <laughs> and that's the aspect ratio card inside of it. Um, but we're still keeping the um, ability for this to grow in size and be adaptable to the content inside of it. All right, so that does it for this week's video. I know that was a little bit longer and maybe a little technical than more videos, but um, this is such a key part of websites because we're always adding images and making sure that when um, our clients upload their images, they're always going to show up correctly. So I really hope that this is useful and you get to implement in your projects. Well, with that done, see you guys next time.